Stride Professional Development is. Yeah, a- absolutely. Stride uh, is a is the nation's leading uh, provider of online education in the K through 12 space. We were formerly known as K 12 Inc. and uh, are you know over two decades in the space of providing. Um, free virtual online education across the nation to students, no matter where they are. Um, we've since exchanged our name to Stride uh, because we're, we, we've we done expanded beyond the K-12 space, though, though that's still very much what we do as a priority. Um, what we've also done with the Stride Professional Development Center is we've leveraged some of our expertise over the past two plus decades of supporting schools and students and educators, teachers, principals. Um, and we are trying to innovate you know, the way professional development happens for educators. And that we're doing that through the Stride Professional Development Center. Um, Gone are the days where, you know, it's face-to-face only PD. Um, It's episodic professional development. Um, It's professional development that's not necessarily relevant to what teachers and educators need right away. So the Professional Development Center is designed to solve that challenge with some unique and innovative uh, ways of delivering content. All right, man. Well, listen, we are super excited here at the network to be engaged with you all and helping to provide this opportunity for teachers all across the country and especially those teachers that are coming from our HBCU backgrounds because we know that education was always one of the stalwarts of most HBCUs in this country. They all had teaching programs and that's what a lot of them were founded for. So there, let's talk a little bit about those special programs that you guys have for the teachers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Roy, you hit hit on the very important point. Um, You know, right now in our country, we're facing facing probably one of the greatest challenges, you know, of our teaching core that we have in many, many years. And that's around this teacher shortage. You know, a lot of teachers are exiting the profession um, um, just just based on tenure. You know, they're they're retiring and moving on. And then you have, you know, our existing teachers who are are being taxed and stressed, you know, particularly post-COVID with, you know, increasing demands, um, challenges that they're facing in the classroom, and a host of other other uh, issues that, that they struggle with. And um, we need good teachers, and we need to support the teachers that we have. So the two things that we're doing um, is that we know first-year teachers, among all teachers, are among the first to leave the profession uh, within the first five years. I think they do um, at, at a 44% rate, which is just scary to think that folks are you know, graduated, want to go in a classroom and make a difference, but, you know, feel like they need to leave within the first five years because it's so challenging. So we want to support them. Um, obviously, as a new teacher, your school that you 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 work, you, where you work your first year, the district where you work, there will be some professional development support to assist you. But we want to go a step further. We want to help every teacher in the country get off to a strong start uh, to their first year and have some uh, stick to it in this, you know, to help them get through that first year. So we're offering a year free um, access to the Stride Professional Development Center. It's a ever growing online database of courses that will help them in a variety of different ways. Uh, classroom management, targeted instruction, uh, and, and a host of other things. And the content will continuously grow. Again, it's just another resource that allows them to sharpen their practice, to feel like they're supported, uh, because the research says that teachers are leaving in large part because they don't feel like they get enough professional support. So we really hope that helps new teachers. So again, this is for any new teacher who just graduated in the country. All you have to do is go to our site and uh, sign on using the Teachers Win uh, uh, discount at, at, at checkout. Also, we have a, a, another campaign where during Teacher Appreciate te- Teacher Appreciation Week, we gifted uh, all teachers in the country, no matter where you are, six months free professional development center access. Uh, but we're doing a special thing with through you, our partnership with the B- BCSN and our, our uh, HBCU graduates, and, and also the schools that you work with. We want any teacher in the country who, who, who you know, through our partnership, um, gets access to the Professional Development Center, and they get six months free using the BCSN 23 uh, passcode at, at checkout. You know, again, our goal is to support and get as many teachers on the site feeling supported, um, you know, to really help, you know, them them succeed and have some success, not only for them, but obviously for our kids and the communities they serve, so. Most definitely. And Darren, listen, we are super excited again to be a part of this. My mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. I have, my, my best friend is a teacher. Absolutely. So we understand. I've worked in the school system for years. So I understand the resources that are needed. I understand why a lot of these teachers 
do take the time and they sit there and after going through college, they're like, you know what, let's do something different. Yeah. So we're happy to be a part of this to help you guys change that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's all you guys need to do. All you need to do is take a look and go to the link that's right below us right now and see what you're going to do. You're going to see two links on the page now, just to make sure. The top one takes you to their professional development page, homepage, that'll let you know about some of the things that are happening there and the things that you have access to. Go to the second link that says teacher appreciation. That'll take you directly to the content page where you can sign up and get your free year if you're a new teacher and your free six months if you're an existing teacher. Let's show them how we utilize resources and we make sure that we take time, those folks who are HBCU alum, and use this. And let's see what Stride has to offer. We're excited about it. We know you will be too. Darren, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the folks? No, I mean, just, you know, as a teacher myself, you know, and and um, understanding the need, um, and, and of course, with the, you know, the, the diversity that's needed in our teaching core across the country, you know, I know our HBCU teacher graduates are just uh, exactly what we need in our community. So I really encourage them and just glad to be doing this partnership with you all. All right. Well, folks, there you go again, Mr. Darren Reed, Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development Learning. We will be seeing you guys and trust me, you'll be seeing more from their partnership with us as we move forward always trying to do our best to make sure that we move forward with the community. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a lot. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes, sir. and pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment. He did text me early and told me an update what was going on. He said that he had a working event, a <laughs> working dinner at a Brazilian steakhouse. So I guess he's going to find one of those official Brazilian steakhouses. And so I told him that sounded really good. I told him I needed some pictures of proof, but uh, uh, it would help. I asked him, I really wanted my own steak, but that might be a little challenging in All terms right. of the debt approval at this point. But with that being said, for everybody, welcome to episode 459 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast. The show is covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports for institutions large and small from the NEIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBC sports culture. HBCU Athletic Aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU Athletic Programs and the business of HBCU Sports as we got into and talked about a little bit on Tuesday. With that being said, we just call it Sports Pedagogy for short. HBCU Sports Pedagogy for short, I should say. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host today, none other than Charles Bishop and A.D. Drew. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper in a beautiful home at Texas City University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. With that being said, Charles, how are you doing today? Doing well, Doc. We got another busy weekend. Uh, see my guy Dave Barnett checked in. Shout out to my golf buddies. Uh, uh, after the season's over, I hope to pick up the sticks again. So, uh, looking forward to another busy weekend. We got a lot of football, volleyball. Uh, let's get after it. No doubt about it. 
it's good to see that you'll be getting back to the sticks. I'm glad you decided to come to work and make sure you get the people to show <laughs> and bypass on your Brazilian steakhouse. Uh, right. <laughs> with that being said, 80 Drew, how are you doing today? We can't hear you. Uh, as Drew is checking on his mic there to get him warmed up. Mm -hmm. Yep, still can't hear you there. Charles, when we talk about these trips uh, and all this information there before we get into some of this hot news of the day, as you said, volleyball and things of that nature. What What is your favorite food? Are you, are you a steak connoisseur? I am much like myself. I'm a huge steak connoisseur. It's killing me right now to not do red meat, but uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a steak connoisseur. <laughs> hello, hello. I love a good steakhouse. <laughs> How long were you all for red meat? Uh, we're I'm doing. I'm in the midst of doing this November challenge. So uh, let, let's let's see how many uh how many pounds I can drop. You know, uh, after November, and then we'll 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 see what happens as we get towards December. It, it becomes I fun again. I think we've got A.D. Drew in here. Sound like he's ready to go. A.D. Drew, with that being said, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Uh, Y'all can't hear me now, right? Yes, we got you. You sounded good. Okay. So if Mike is having steak at a Brazilian steakhouse, what am, what do we have here in Georgia? Because, you know, we've got – I mean, all we've got is a uh, long start outback. You know, we don't have none of that fancy <laughs> Hey, they, hey no, we, gotta, we gotta bring you up here. Other than that, I gotta go to the grocery house. store. I gotta go to public to pick me up a season myself. <laughs> yeah. Come on to Houston. We'll take you to a couple of Brazilian steakhouse. We'll, we'll take, uh, we'll take out. care of you we'll, we'll give you some of the official, unofficial ones, as they would say from that uh position, with that being said. We also have some other traditionally good steakhouses, just being in Texas, uh, with all these cows around here. But with that being said. Uh, Drew, it's two days before the Florida Classic. I see you ready and branded correctly. We'll get into that matchup. We talked a little bit on Tuesday, but I made sure we had it because we want to get your perspective. I'm making sure we get the other half of the Brian and AD team uh, giving them perspective. And then, obviously, specialists on HBCU's mid-major division, as we talked about. And so we'll get to talk about two of the HBC programs that made the Division II playoffs. We have one of them on tap, so we'll talk about both of them in terms of the bye and who they might have in the matchup to come, and we'll certainly get into Virginia Union in their matchup as well. With that being said, let me go back to you, Charles. What's on your mind in terms of the news of the day? Yeah, let's take a look as the swag. They announced the volleyball tournament seedings. Uh, which will be taking place out of Prairie View this weekend, the SWAC Volleyball Championship. Uh, let's take a look at the SWAC has announced the 2023 Volleyball Tournament seedings uh, following the conclusion of regular season play. Alabama State, they entered the tournament as the number one seed, followed by Prairie View as the number two seed. Uh, behind them, Florida AM, and they will be the number three seed. And seeds four through eight go as follows, Alabama a and m Comes in as four. Jackson State is five. C. Grambling as the number six seed. Texas Southern as number seven seed. And then you have the number eight seed is Bethune Cookman. So uh, things kick off tomorrow. Quarterfinals, November 17th, number one seed versus the number eight seed, Alabama State versus Bethune Cookman. Things kick off at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, that will be broadcast on SWAT Digital Network, uh, which I'll be part of the uh, broadcasting. Good stuff. Congratulations. Look forward to hearing from you as you join the broadcast and see what's going on there. Uh, in terms of those matchups, obviously one versus eight, you would think how that would go, two versus seven. But it tends to get interesting, not so much with the three and six, but that four and five. Yeah. Alabama a and m and Jackson State, you know, there is not a lot of difference oftentimes between those two seeding. So that's always an interesting match. Saturday, 2 o'clock and 4.30. Uh, Prairie View football game will be in there, and a lot of people will focus on that. But some people will have a cheat code and certainly looking over there in volleyball in Prairie View, Texas, to see what that looks like. Uh, and then Sunday is the championship match, which will be on ESPN uh, channels as well. With that being said, let me go to AD Drew. Drew, what's news of the day for you? Let's go bowling, everybody. 
And I'm not talking about the one with the round ball. I'm talking about the one with the pig skin. <laughs> as the Florida Beach Bowl game is now set. And I'm not sure if you guys covered this on Tuesday or not, so I'll, I'll get back into it if you did. Johnson C. Smith and Fort Valley State, the announcement was made Monday, uh, just two months after the, after the game was announced. Uh, they pitched the rivals from the – Two historically uh, historic conferences, CIAA and the SIAC. The Beach Bowl will be played in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at the twenty one thousand seat DRV PNK Stadium at seven thirty p.m. Uh, both Johnson C and Fort Valley finished seven and three. That was a five game improvement for Johnson C, and Fort Valley finished one game behind their pace from last year. And unofficially, this game has been dubbed the Maurice Flowers Bowl, as Maurice Flowers was, is the former head coach at Fort Valley State immediately before he took the job at Johnson C. Smith. And you know some of those players on the Fort Valley sideline were recruited by Coach Flowers. So will, will there be love or will there be animosity because – he left him and went and went to another job. So we 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 shall see how that uh, how that turns out. Great point. And no, we specially saved that for you, AD Drew. We knew you coming in with the D two mid major news. We didn't spoil it for you. We had that waiting for you. Great job. Appreciate the updates and making that tie. That's why we bring you in, particularly to do what you do on those mid major programs. Back to you, Charles. What other news you want to share today? Yeah, well, let's take a look at the uh, MEAC as they, they announced their weekly volleyball honors presented by Coca-Cola. How is Raya, Rhea McKenna uh, was named the MEAC Player of the Week presented by Coca-Cola. Norfolk State's Gabriel Gilbert uh, was named the Rookie of the Week, while North Carolina Central's Bella Derringer earned the Setter of the Week honors respectively. And Coppin State's Ashley Roman was named the Defensive Player of the Week. Let's take a look at some of their statistics. Uh, McKenna, Ryan McKenna, recorded a double-double of 15 kills and 18 digs in the regular season finale against Norfolk State. She had one service ace to complete her stat line. Uh, then we take a look at Gilbert against Howard uh, to conclude conference action. She was averaging 2.5 kills, 2.25 digs, and one ace per set. She led the Spartans in all four categories, kills, digs, and aces. Derringer. She averaged 10.75 assists per set, totaling 43 assists in the four-set victory for the Eagles over the South Carolina State Bulldogs. She added two kills, service aces, and 11 digs in the match as well. And then Roman, she averaged 4.8 digs per set for the Eagles this past week, including a weekend high, 17 against Morgan State on Friday. She wrapped up the weekend with 29 total digs over two matches against Morgan State with seven assists and two service aces. So those are your MEAC Weekly Volleyball Honors. Good stuff. Well, shout out to MEAC Volleyball Honors as they get ready for their volleyball tournament going on this week as well. A lot of good action taking place for uh, the MEAC as well as the SWAC as we will have two champions in volleyball at the major division level for the MEAC and SWAC coming on Sunday. With that being said, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side and get into the, the marching sport. It's coming down in terms of our official champion. And then the big news will roll out in terms of what that looks like. But we're going to start with the marching sport with the mid-major division and then get into some games and we'll talk a, a little more about the playoffs and have Drew kind of break us down and see what his thoughts in terms of those matchups. We'll let Charles sneak in there and give some news as well in terms of his thoughts in terms of how far Virginia Union Benedict can actually go in the Division II playoffs. With that, stick with us. We'll be right back after this first break. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. 
From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love laugh and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. <laughs> this is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. I'll tell you all the time those mid break uh, comments <laughs> are, are off the chain, and I'm so glad it's not recorded for the record. At some point. <laughs> We will have to do some outtakes <laughs> and record those just for dexterity shape for uh, our five-year, 10-year, or four, 600-year uh, show episodes or something like that. With that being said, let's get into our mid-major marching sport bands of the week. We're in week 11, and it's going down. And this year, obviously, as we will have our third uh, edition of our mid-major sport champion, we will actually have in Atlanta that Friday before the Celebration Bowl at HBCU um, band championship, if you would, at the mid-major and major division level. So it'd be fascinating to see what that looks like. But let's get in here. Not a lot of changes here. Some teams have kind of moved around. We did have the big band matchups between the CIAA championship and the SIC championship in terms of those bands taking care of business there. That being said, let's get into number seven. Get right to it. No teams dropped out. So at number seven, we have Albany State. Albany, Golden Ram Marching Show Band, three and one overall, three and one. Uh, they was previously ranked six. They dropped a spot after losing, not only on the field in terms of the game, but they lost uh, the band matchup as well in the SIEC championship. So they get their first loss of the season, and they do fall one spot. Bring us to number six, Virginia State Trojan Explosion, 4-1, 3-0. Uh, they fall a spot this week, uh, 124 points, as you see. Bring us to number five, Clark Atlanta, Mighty Marching Panther Bands. Uh, they also fall a spot, 3-0, 2-0 on the season, 130 points, uh, as they continue to mix it up. Bring us to number four, we have those Langston Marching Pride. They're 3-0, 2-0. Uh, but with everything that took place in the championship matchup, they also fall a spot this week as they were previous ranked three with 132 points. Bringing us to number three, Benedict Marching Tiger Band of Distinction. They go to 4-0. and They jump four spots to number three. They win the SIAC uh, battle between Albany State uh, as they get it done uh, and go to 3-0 and in terms of where they are in the conference race, seven first place where they previously ranked 751 points. Bringing us to number two, Winston-Salem State, the Red Sea of Sal. They remain at number two, 5-1, five 5-0. One, five oh. Three first place votes, 162 points, uh, holding steady at number two. Bringing us to number one, Miles Purple Marching Machine, 5-1, five 4-0. Oh. Five first place votes, 164 total points. Remain at number one as the Miles Purple Marching Machine remain number one. In week number 11, Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of marching sport as things come to a close? Pretty much for the season, we'll be able to name official champion next week. Mm -hmm. Where are your thoughts as things prevail at this point in week number 11? I really enjoyed uh, the fighting Stephen Gaines, uh, the ones to Salem Red Sea of Sound. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, uh, I got an opportunity to catch them on, on YouTube. Miles just brings a different dynamic. They're, they're, they're big and loud, and that's uh, unique in regards to uh, looking at a lot of the Division two bands. And, you know, shout out to Virginia State, uh, the, the Trojan Explosion. I really enjoyed 
uh, their performance versus Virginia Union. So we've had some some really good bands this this past season. Now it'll be interesting to see next week what can Winston Salem the Red Sea of Sound since they have have all this headwind and other band poll. Uh, once we take a look at the matchups, do they stand toe to toe with Miles? Good stuff. With that being said, AD Drew, what are your thoughts in week number eleven for for the marching sport mid major style? Your number seventeen, Albany State. Don't sleep on them. They're a small band, but they are a uh, powerful band, and I and I like them. Uh, you know. Winston Salem, consistency. Not only yeah. do they bake the bark in Dr. Cavill's marching sport poll, but they also make, have been making the bark in the band of the year poll. So that is that's just shout out to them. Uh, but but Miles, Miles has had Miles has a distinct sound. They have a distinct power for a smaller. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that's that's the one thing. That's the one thing about Miles. And, and I'll be honest. Hard for me to say this. Miles has put it on Tuskegee last couple of times that they've uh, go, <laughs> that they've gone head to head. And that, that's hard for a brother like me to say. Uh-huh. So uh, but I'm just. I'm just being real with well, you guys. Yeah. They, they, have done, they have done it. So uh, hopefully my Crimson Pipers will someday somehow. Some way, get back into the conversation, but uh, 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 until then, that. somehow. <laughs> but until then, <laughs> let's keep it in the state of Alabama. Hmm. I like it. Good job, touche, touche. I like that. With that being said, before we go to this next break, give you an update. You have Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils that are traveling to Huntsville, Alabama against the Alabama a and Bulldogs with 9.32 left in the first quarter. Uh, the Bulldogs up 7-0. They had seven play, 81-yard drive that took 334. Uh, Eaglin ran for 17 yards for a touchdown, and Barbosa made the kick. So they leave 7-0 to zero, uh, in the first quarter of that matchup. Previously, I thought this game Thursday night was on ESPN, but my understanding is not being broadcast. We'll look into that, but we'll give you some updates in terms of the game cast as you continue to tune in and watch us do what we do. With that being said, we'll be right back after this break, and I'll come back and give A.D. Drew the chance to give an update and some thoughts he has. 2002 Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. (laughs) We all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab. Before we get into our matchups, again, as we promised, we'll continue to give you updates. Uh, we do have a second touchdown from Alabama AM. 
Mississippi Valley State had their drive. They had 34 yards on six plays, then fumbled the ball. Uh, and then Alabama A&M took seven plays and went 81 yards in three minutes and 34 seconds to score um, their second touchdown uh, of that drive as they lead uh, 13-0 waiting for the point after to connect, give you an update in terms of what that was. Quincy pass was complete to Cameron Young for 14 yards for that second touchdown, if you would, in terms of that. That was five plays for 61 yards. With that being said, let's get into some of these matchups. So we want to get into mid-major matchups, and I'm excited about having A.D. Drew. Charles will do his thing as well. It's Coonstown. Any of y'all been to Coonstown, Pennsylvania? Andre Not Reed enough. Stadium, to give you some idea of who plays some football there. Mm. Charles, you been there? It sounds like you going to. I have been lately. Like Andre Reed. <laughs> it is the Buffalo Bills Andre Reed from Coonstown. Okay. Yes, indeed. Oh, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. NCAA Division II playoff first round uh, in terms of this matchup. It features the number two ranked Virginia Union Panthers, as we talked about uh, on Tuesday in terms of our rankings. Panthers come in 10 and 1 after winning the CIAA championship over Fayetteville State. They were 7 and 1 in the conference race as they, when they beat Fayetteville State, that was a get back type of game after losing earlier to Fayetteville State in the uh, Hurricane Bowl, as A.D. Drew has announced it. They feature Coonstown Golden Bears, who are 9-2, 7-0, coming after uh, out of the PSAC. If you look at the top 25 in terms of coaches, uh, ACFA uh, poll rankings, they would be outside of 25, but just outside at number 26 in terms of where they would be in a top 25 type of ranking if you wanted to have that information. But with that being said, I'm going to go to you, Drew, first to kind of give us your insights of what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup uh, of the Panthers facing Golden Bears, not the Golden Bears we know out of the SIC, but the Golden Bears out of the <laughs> Peace Act. Yeah. Well, before I give my thoughts, I'm going to give uh... – Coach Dr. Alvin Parker's thoughts as he had his uh, Tuesday press conference and uh, I was on that press conference Zoom call on Tuesday. And one of the questions I asked him was about the matchup and having to actually switch regions. And he said, geographically, when you looked at that region, Super Region 1, there were two teams that were candidates to possibly switch regions, one being Virginia Union, the other being Delta State. But because Delta State was a top four seed, that kind of left Virginia Union out there at, by default to switch your, uh, to switch regions. Now, when you look at the travel for Virginia Union, it is actually closer to, to Virginia, to Virginia Union's campus, than it would have been had they went south into the Carolinas or even into Georgia to play one of the other opponents who made the uh, switch. So it, for geographically, for the fans, it was a good thing that this game is, uh, was switched to Pennsylvania. And did you know Jada Byers is from the area where they are playing this game? So I expect a bunch of Jada Byers fans to... Nope. Be, be in the area. I believe he, he's from less than an hour away from uh, Cookstown, uh, Pennsylvania. So uh, that that was uh, that was one thing. But he said he did say it was interesting uh, having to go play a uh, an opponent who basically he was not preparing for. You know, he had data on the other teams in Super Region Two uh, from having uh, either faced them in the in last few years or just in general, just general scouting. So this is this will be a challenge. For Virginia Union, and will it will come down to for Virginia Union? Can they get that run game going? Mm. You know they've gone they've gone through three running backs this season, uh, and all three running backs have produced. So what does that tell you? That all that offensive line is stout. If that offensive line does what it needs to do, and Virginia Union is able to shorten the game. Not in a way that you that you would expect from a team that is outmatched, but just to play that Virginia Union style, that is something uh, that, that's going to be to their advantage. And last thing, 
Don't forget about that Virginia Union defense, who's only giving up about 11, 12 points a game, y'all. So uh, the, if the defense comes to play, along with that running game, you know, Virginia Union could advance to the second round. Good stuff, good stuff. Let me go to you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup between uh, Coonstown and Virginia Union? Yeah, I'm like AD. This is going to be a real grind offensively because you're talking about two extremely stout defenses, uh, two deep defenses that are like tops in Division II football, uh, especially when you take a look at Virginia Union and Kutztown. Uh, and to me, the question now when, when things become an offensive grind, uh, what, who's, whose special teams are going to step up? Because I think somewhere along the line, you got to have you know a big play out of your special teams, whether you create it, uh, in some manner, create create a uh, uh, create a blocked uh, uh, field goal, a punt of some sort. But you need some sort of momentum play to create a short field. I believe that's going to be huge in this game. And to your point, uh, AD, especially when you got uh, uh, players like uh, Jada Byers, uh, who who you know we yet to see somebody stop him. Another thousand yard rushing season, but they have he has very good depth at the running back position as well. Another running back that's run for six hundred uh, yards as well for uh, for Virginia Union, Curtis Island. So I'm I'm looking at you know the, the who can establish something uh, honestly with regards to even throwing the football a little bit. I need to I need a big play downfield. I think we're going to talk a little bit about that, especially when we talk about some of the matchups this weekend. Somebody's got to win a one-on-one battle with regards to throwing the football. So uh, I think Virginia Union can go up to Kutztown, uh, but you're talking about a team that's as hot as any team right now. They won nine in a row, knocked off Slippery Rock last week. That was a huge feather in that cap uh, to knock off Slippery Rock. So this is going to be a tough one for Virginia Union to win. Hey, and let, let me follow that up. Yeah, let me follow that up a little bit, Charles. Uh, a lot of people may not know this. Virginia Union had not one, not two, but three different backs in three consecutive weeks named mm. CIAA Back of the Week. So, once again, that's a shout-out to that offensive line in addition to the ability of those, of those running backs to actually hit the holes that the, that, that offensive line creates. And, and so, you know, Union... Establish that run game, but like you said, somewhere, somebody is going to have to pass the game. And what is it going to come down to? Who's going to play the cleanest game? Who's yeah. not going to turn the ball over? Yeah. Who's not going to have Who's not going to have the penalties? Because that with these two teams, that's very little margin of error for either one of these two teams to make to swing this game one way or the other. Good stuff. Good stuff. This next matchup is the SIEC game of the week. We won't break it down. Uh, because we don't know the opponent. But I did want to shout it out and wanted to put on everybody's mind so they would have one eye on the potential opponent. Uh, as you know, Benedict Tigers, number one seed in the region, number one HBCU program we have as well. Um, they are 11-0, 8-0, and they will host um, in their region the winner between – uh, the number four seed, Lenore Ryan Bears, that are 10-1, and 8-1. One, and one. Uh, They come out of the SAC, uh, and they're number 11 nationally ranked in terms of, again, the coaches poll at the Division II level. That game is between Lenore Ryan Bears and the Shepherd Rams. The Shepherd Rams, if you're looking at the top 25, we just said number six, Coonstown, is playing against Virginia Union. Well, this 27th ranked team is the Shepherd Rams. They're out of the PSAC as well. So you have the matchup between the PSAC and the SAC, if you would. Lenore Ryan Bears and Shepherd Rams, the winner of that game, will face Benedict. We'll get a chance to talk about that a little more next weekend. Uh, but we had a little bonus game that I wanted to look at in terms of uh, FAMU and Bethune-Cookman in the classic game here. A Florida Classic. So I'm going to go to you, Drew, and give you a chance to talk a little bit about that matchup, and then we'll go to our break in terms of Orlando, Florida, as you know, Camping World Stadium, Florida Classic. The guys, Brian and Charles, said it's nothing to this matchup. They're going to get it done. And so I won't even go back to Charles uh, to pick on Bethune-Cookman Wildcats as he's already let it be known. But I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a chance to talk about this matchup 
uh, against Florida A&M, 9 one 7 0, looking to complete a perfect season. This would be the third straight year that the Eastern Division team was able to come uh, unshaved in terms of going 8 0 in the SWAT race if fam, you can get it done. If you think about it, since the game has moved to campus, Charles, as you know, as we've gone to all of them, uh, particularly since they've been on the campus, that's five straight years that the Eastern Division has hosted this game. First two years was all corn. Obviously, they moved to the West since the conference expanded three years ago. Uh, but total time, it's been in the East. Uh, so it'll be interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about this East-West type of thing. Uh, obviously, FCS, uh, FAMU has moved up from nine to seven when the poll rankings came out. And they'll face the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, the three and seven, two and five. Bethune-Cookman is on a bit of a height streak in terms of least winning the last two games, including against Alabama AM and Mississippi Valley State, oddly enough, the two teams that are playing today. And I'll give you an update on those scores after A.G. Drew gives his thoughts in terms of this matchup. All right. First of all, this is a this is a rival game. Which means, what do we do with a rival game, everybody? We throw the records out the window. And that's what you need to do in this particular game. Who remembers 2010 when Bethune, on its way to a Black College National Championship, was upset by who? For the A&M University. Who remembers 2018 when FAMU, on, it, on their way to the Celebration Bowl, was what? Upset by the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. So yes, on paper, FAMU is the is the better team. There's nobody who who would take Bethune outside of people down there with their school uh, who support their school on the beach. But Bethune is hot. Bethune has a lot of, of unknowns and. The, the 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 one thing that's going to intrigue me about this game, what uniform will that school on the beach wear? Because every time for the Florida Classic, they come with some type of uniform combination. You know, for the Classic, they look like Oregon when they come out and play. They you never know what they're gonna wear. You know, Charles knows about those different combinations because I don't I don't think I ever saw Jackson State wear the same uniform twice for the last two years. The un- same uniform combination. Yeah, but, that's true. You know, but uh, Bethune is going to come out with some crazy uniform combination. Hopefully, it won't be too distracting for the Rattlers as they go in. We know they sat a lot of people last week. So the one thing that I am a little concerned about: how quickly will those who sat, who will play on Saturday, how quickly will they get back into the rhythm that they need to uh, pull away from Bethune? Because if this game is close. Mid third quarter into fourth quarter, don't scare me. Hey, you you're too scary, man. Scary. You're too scary, I, man. I, I, man, come I, on. Bro, hey, I got y'all. Y'all acting too Charles, scared around here. Charles, I I got you know you know how we talk about data points. <laughs> I got ten years worth of data points on why I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Nine matchups. Ten years worth of data points. So I have a I have a trend line, Sean. <laughs> That's I why I'm scared, and I don't have enough of the new trend line to have. You you, you, you know how you got that uh, confidence group. You you take stats. Yeah. You know, that bar, yeah, the, the margin of error and and, 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 and and the confidence. The confidence. Was, was, uh, I don't I don't have that, that confidence right level. Now. To the point where I need it to be to be able to to present my data to the rest of the class. I, it's trending how I want it to trend as I take a look at the early uh, survey results, but I still have not hit it where it's st- statistically significant that I can present it to class with with confidence. Y'all Give you an update on the Alabama A&M game. Just getting into the <laughs> second quarter, 15 minutes there. Uh, Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils have scored, so it's 14-7 in terms of that matchup. I can give you uh, – it was a touchdown pass by Jerrion Williams uh, – Jerrion Williams, I should say, and the reception was by Kendrick Ross. Uh, he had a 64-yard pass play on 
that drive. 14 and 7. It's just started in the second quarter with that. Is, we'll be right back. Is this another break. comeback we'll against a and major of marching sport, marching sport uh, right after this break. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. <laughs> quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your beard parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kinda got a six sense. And a head up display. They're here. Hit the field, warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life. Because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge. Featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. If you press the analytic data with your hip hop, if you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, because he's going to teach a lesson, yes sir. This is Dr. Will with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Let's get into the major division marching sport in week number 11. Again, no teams dropping out this week, but we're looking at the top seven. A lot of rearrangements. We have a major upset this week. I know a lot of folks are used to Southern in terms of the human jukebox, but check this out. <laughs> After this week at number seven. And we're going to stir up the nest. They're just taking L's all over the place in the bayou. <laughs> It's been tough. It's been tough. Oh, but I'm here to give it to them. Let's look at the top seven. Bethune Cookman, the Marching Wildcats, they fall to seven. They were previous ranked four. They did not uh, play. They have the big matchup coming this week, so it'll be interesting to see can they go undefeated through the season as they are three and oh, one and oh. Not a lot of they won't. matchups. We'll see what that means as things shake out. At number six, you said you're going to take a hit. They gonna take a confident on that one, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that meets the confidence level. <laughs> <laughs> and number six, you have Texas Southern, the Ocean of Soul. Uh, they fall one spot, three and two, two and two. They did not have a matchup with the Braves uh, in terms of this past week. Uh, All Corn State, 145 points uh, at number six. Bring us to number five, Southern Human Jukebox, fouled to five and two. This is the first time since I've been doing the poll for three years that Southern has had two losses on the season. Mm. They had that struggle this year, five and two. Even according to, quote, unquote, the professional judges, they've been having some concerns with the human jukebox. They're just not doing what they usually do, uh, although the standard is extremely high. I have them at five and two, three and two in the conference rate, 157 mm. points. Uh, they fall from this three spot, two spots as they lose last week uh, in their matchup to Prairie View and m the Panthers that beat them in terms of the game and in terms of the March to Fort Band. Uh, and we see the fall of that on the field. We'll talk about that a little more maybe in the second part of the show as we did it on Tuesday. And you go check that out in terms of our intro segment around that talk. And number four, Alabama State, the Mighty Marching Hornets. They're at four and two, three and two. They move up two spots, 165 points, as they continue to get it done. And number three, Mississippi Valley State, Mean Green Marching Machine, has surprised everybody all year long, four and one, one and one, 188 points. They move up two spots from the previous being five. And number two, Jackson State, Sonic Boom of the South, five and one, four and oh. Three players, first place votes, 200 points. Uh, they are at number two. They add a first place vote. 
uh, as that first place vote from, from Southern two weeks ago is gone. Bringing us to number one, Norfolk State, the Spartan Legions of 6 0, 2 0. They add a first place vote as they have seven total, 206 points. Uh, previous rank one, they stay there. The Norfolk State Spartan Legion continues at the top of the poll ranking in week number 11. Charles, what do you say about all the movement in the March of Sport in week number 11? Can you believe it? Southern, the human jukebox? I actually can believe it uh, in regards to the human jukebox. Uh, I, it has been a, a tough season for them, but I will say this. And you know, I've, I've been crazy about the Norfolk State Spartan Legion all, all season, but let me tell you something. Right now, nobody, nobody wants to see the Sonic Boom of the South uh, on an off week. They went down to Baton Rouge and they showed out once again. Another, another boom box. This. Oh my God, they are on a different. They are on a different level right now. I mean, it has been some time since I've I've heard this type of sound. You know, come out of Sonic Boom of the South. Field shows have been. Uh, immaculate, but they are hitting on all cylinders. Uh, and I just invite everybody to, you know, get out there on YouTube over the past couple of weeks against Texas Southern and then this past week against uh, Southern. My God, they are, they are, they're different right now. They, they are playing, uh, unprecedented. Even the bandhead guys that are reaching out to me, they're, they're blown away by what the Sonic Boom is doing. That's pretty good. And you talking about doing it the perfect time of the year as you shape up for, uh, this inaugural national championship, it's a good time to be reaching a new peak, a new high, uh, almost the opposite of what we're seeing from the human Jew box. With that being said, A.D. Drew, what are your thoughts on top seven for the marketing sport in week number 11? Somebody in Baton Rouge can't get the rule right in the gumbo <laughs> because, I mean, you having problems with the band, you having problems with the football uh, team. You know, there's a lot of chirping going on about who who who's still employed, who should be still employed. You know, there's a lot of things going on down there in on the bluff. And like likely saying, uh, something about this poll, though, Doctor Cavill. You've got the blue blood in Jackson State doing their thing. Mm. And it seems like the rest of the blue bloods mm. are not catching up to the to the new way of doing things, yeah. the new program, you know. And and I'll say it, mm -hmm. fam, you has been nowhere near your pole this entire season. Blue blood, very true. Southern, good point. Dro dropping down, Southern not in the top three, you know that that's a, that's a blue blood. Southern. Norfolk, new blood. I don't call it blue blood. Norfolk is, is 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 a new blood, you know. So some of these A and T, where's A and T at? Blue blood. So what's going on with our blue bloods? Why have they not figured out this is a this is a new era, this is a new generation, and we need to improve our sound. They figured it out in Mississippi. Why can't <laughs> the rest of our blue bloods? figure out what it's going to take for them to remain to be considered a blue blood. Man, that's an excellent breakdown. I appreciate you providing that perspective. And in my opinion, you're right on the money in terms of the changing of the guard, what is taking place in regards to the marching sport, particularly in year 2023. We'll see what it all means and as things go forward and how things shake out. But I'm fascinated about some of these year-ending matchups to see what it looks like. <laughs> to your <laughs> point, though, Charles, the Sonic <laughs> Boom and Style, yeah. they're rolling. They yeah. are figuring it out in terms of what it means to provide the brand that they have, yeah. but also add in the newness and to elevate, take it up a level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and AD, you mentioned North Carolina AT. I mean, if nobody's there when a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? I don't know. <laughs> like Tennessee State, the aristocrate them blue bloods. That, that, exactly right. That's what I was gonna say. I I failed to mention the aristocrats of bands when I when I was yeah. mentioning those blue bloods. Yeah, I, yeah. I failed to mention blue, them. Blue, that's what exactly as well is another one that's at the bottom in regards. Now, blue some blue. of that is because they hadn't traveled as well, but that's your point. Is hey, but that's part of being a blue blood. That you gotta travel. 
to be seen, to get it out there, you're absolutely right. How did so they become blue bloods? How did they become blue bloods? They went into your house and embarrassed you. That's yep. how they became blue bloods. Now, right. for one for one reason or another, they don't get on the band too big. We, we don't have a budget. We don't have uniforms. We don't have this. We don't have that. All we get is excuses from all the blue bloods except for one. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Sonic Boom of the South. With that being said, let's go to our uh, next break. Last break, come back on the other side and get into some of the matchups from age of division. We got some good ones, and they have a lot on the line. We'll see what these two gentlemen say about that. Stick with us as we get into our last break. Come back on the other side. You think all pads are exactly the same? Think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Them belly full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. And press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to allow yeah, and root about, root about. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, so we have none other than A.D. Drew. We have Professor Bishop and Professor Drew. With that being said, let's get into the major division games of the week. We're going to start in the MIAC, Washington, D.C., we saw what took place there last week. This time we're going back there. Green Stadium, 12 noon Central Standard Time, ESPN Plus. You have the Morgan State Bears, some would argue one of the toughest defense HBCUs, top defense in FCS as well. Four and five trying to get the 500 to close out the season. Three and one, finish out with a four and one record if they can get it done on the road. But they're at number six, Howard Bison, five and five. Three and one on the season. How wins this game? They go to the celebration bowl. Mm. I have Morgan mm. State ranked 12 overall ranking in terms of what it looks like, just to give you some indications in terms of why I have them in my top 21 team. With that being said, Drew, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Mark my words. No, they be do they be do the uh HW. Read my lips. Howard will not score 50 on Morgan State. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the question is, can Morgan State get 20 points offensively? There you go. That is the question. If Morgan State could get somewhere into the 20s, especially the high 20s, Morgan State has more than a puncher's chance in this particular ball game. Uh, you know, Howard, Howard was motivated. Will Howard be motivated again? Yeah, we know the Celebration Bowl is on the line, but that was central that they're playing. And then, let's keep something else in mind. And uh, 
Erica Lee said this on Sunday show. Morgan considers Howard a rival. Mm-hmm. Howard does not consider Morgan a rival. So what does that mean for the intensity that these two teams will, will be playing with? Morgan will be playing with something extra. Howard, on the other hand, is just trying to, quote, unquote, handle business and not lose this game. And there's a difference when you're going out to play to win versus mm-hmm. playing not to lose. So I can see Morgan State upsetting Howard in this game, opening the door back up for Central, and everybody gets the, the matchup that we thought we were going to get back in July. But wouldn't it be a dream matchup, an event, since Howard likes to do events? Wouldn't it be such a great event for FAMU and Howard if FAMU were to go ahead and win the SWAC championship against the, against the West the Western Division team. Now, let me throw this caveat in there. If you put if you pit Howard against anybody of those three in the West, John Grant, you are gonna have to pitch your marketing team. You are gonna have to pay them some major overtime to figure out how to market <laughs> that game properly. If if Howard plays anybody out the West, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> uh, I think you got a point. Well, well, well let me well. add this to you. Let me add this to you in regards to before you comment on that. It sounds like you might have a little more thought than that as well. <laughs> Braves will show up. I'll say that. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of Panthers that are going to get on the plane. They'll get out there. Grambling, we've seen how, what they how do. Howard Alcorn doesn't sound sexy, though. No. Howard Grambling sounds sexy, though. Howard Grambling uh, may be sexy. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. It sounds sexy, know. but we've seen those men. Yeah, we've we, we Grambling has not traveled. Like they right. used Howard to Graham, exactly, exactly. Howard Graham is how they sexy when when Eddie Robinson was coaching. Yeah, right. Tempo. Tempo. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's a lot of years and miles on that trip. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. With that being said, though, I want to say this: people forget this, and Amy Drew alluded to Morgan State seeing this as a rival or a program they just don't like. I don't know if it's the public-private thing going on, but last year this game was played. Uh, in Morgan, Hughes Stadium. And you have the big hullabaloo. Now you don't have share of championship, but you did last year. Howard, after they won that game, there's no uh, – they rebuilding uh, the the locker rooms over there at Hughes Stadium. So they decided to have their championship on the field. They had banners out there. They were taking pictures. They had the trophy out there in terms of calling themselves cold champs. Mm. Um, and so a lot of folks have not forgotten this. They were smoking cigars out there. Mm. And a lot of the Morgan Bears players saw this. Remember this. Central saw it, not like the Bears, and you saw they were upset. They couldn't get it done. But I, I imagine that the Morgan State Bears, that has stayed with them for 365 days. And I'm not sure the Morgan Bears have been told that they, if they win this game, they don't get a part of the championship. There's not a lot of news out there except for our news heads that understand there's no longer a co-tried champion that it goes to whoever win it. So they also think they have championship on the line. Charles, what are your thoughts? And then I'll come back to you to get some additional thoughts on what I just added for that as well. Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, uh, yeah the million-dollar question is how much offense can Morgan State get in this game? And that – to me, uh, is the, is the big question, uh, and then the, the 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 other bigger question. Quinn Williams uh, last week against North Carolina Central played probably the best game I've ever seen him play uh, in a Howard uniform. I mean, he was in control of the game, made plays downfield, ran when he needed to run. They got to have that exact same performance out of him this upcoming week against Morgan State because I just don't think that. Um, uh, Howard is going to be able to run the ball against the stout Morgan State defense. And and I know uh, the, the strength is in the running game with regards to Jared Hunter and, and, and Eaton James and, and guys of that nature. But uh, this literally has to be that, that Quentin Williams uh, coming out party, so to speak, so everybody knows that uh, he's going to be the man going into the celebration ball. So I got Howard in this one. I, I, think, uh, I think all the Howard alums, they get to light up a cigar with their uh, Merlot and get to enjoy this. And, <laughs> oh my God. and 
And I think this is uh, <laughs> <Another word>. I, think, <laughs> I think we'll see the the Howard fan base with a a good vintage year down in Atlanta uh, for the celebration. Drew, I know you wanted to add some additional comments uh, as Charles. I was talking about uh, not only would they have a cigar, but they're going to have it with Merlot. That's pretty nice. Sound like Mike Washington. I don't even know. Sound like Mike Washington. Yeah. I don't even know if my comments are appropriate after that comment by Charles, but I'm going to say this. Morgan comes in with the same chip on their shoulder for this game Mm -hmm. that Howard had on their shoulder when they played Central. So, once again, can you after you were the the kid who beat up the bully, now can you beat up the next kid who wants to take you out because you beat up the bully? That's what this is going to come down to on Saturday. Honestly, I say no. I say oh. no. I say Morgan is going to find some type of way. There's going to be some type of fluke play that's going to give Morgan that momentum. And Morgan will will take that game. It's on the campus of Howard, right? They're playing yeah, in Howard, yeah. correct? So yeah, everything Howard. everything on the line this weekend. We got championship implications of the home team hosting at Howard and Prairie View as well. With Alabama, said, "Boy, this is going to be a weekend." Woo! And that's going to be our next matchup. But before we get to that matchup, I did want to get these numbers out for our viewers. Howard offensively scores twenty four point three, and this is conference. Um, numbers that I'm looking at, right, in terms of that. Uh, well, this is their overall, I would say, for the 10 games played this year. Howard scoring 24.3. Morgan State scored 17.1. Morgan State's defense only giving up 22.2, while Howard is 23.1. Um, so interesting when you look at it from that perspective. If we look at it just in terms of conference-only stats, Obviously, sample size is small with just four games, but it is the teams in the conference in terms of what that looks like, which fascinates me um, all the way. So you're going to have to learn not to upset these brave fans. What did I say? What did I do? What did I do? do? Mike Mike Jones said, get your facts straight. Howard and Alcorn set the record for the Circle City Classic. A bowl that went away for about three years. We ain't talking about the celebration for the We ain't coming up 20 years ago. <laughs> a bowl that went away. Ah, uh, Tiffa. <laughs> Tiffa. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Time to get over there. <laughs> what, 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 Valley and uh, Central just set, to, set a record up there in the Circle City class this year, too, for the worst attendance. So what, what, what are you telling me? <laughs> 36 Howard, Howard in terms of uh four games conference play 20 29.5 Morgan State scoring 22 when he gets in the conference they got a new quarterback freshman mm. that's a little better than what they were playing with the seniors in terms yeah. of defense in conference Howard is leading they only giving up 20 points a game defensively uh while and that's 20 even while Morgan State is 20.3 so they're neck and neck. It should be a slugfest in terms of that matchup. Let's flip it and go to the swag, Charles, that you kind of teased out. Mm. So I'm going to go with you first, Drew, on this matchup. This is Alabama State traveling to Prairie View and m We've already talked about how the East has dominated on the West. Last year, Prairie View went to the West, uh, uh, Mississippi Valley with the chance to go to a championship game, two in a row. Uh, they would have been facing Jackson State, and they laid the egg. This time they have it at home, but they have a tougher ranked team, at least in terms of the rankings. Uh, you have a top seven matchup, number three, Alabama State, and number seven, Prairie View. Alabama State Hornets come in at six and three, five and two in terms of the conference race. Uh, Prairie View at number seven comes in at five and five, five and two. Alabama State Hornets have won five games, the last five games. Prairie View has won two straight. I'm fascinated about this matchup. A.D. Drew, what are your thoughts in terms of who's getting it done here in this matchup? Question. Had Alabama State not lost to Miles, would we think of Alabama State in a different uh, light? I'd say so, yes. Hmm. 
without yep. that Division II loss on, 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 on the record. So seven, let's take seven. So seven let's and take, two, five and two, yeah. yeah. So let's take that one off and, and, and let's, th let's throw that out the window. Alabama State, probably, probably outside of Florida A&M, has been playing the best defense in the SWAC conference. Yeah. So, and you said they were doing what, uh, Dr. Kabir? They were traveling to Prairie View, Texas? Yeah. And what travel? And what travels? Defense travels. Mm, <laughs> That's true. That's throw true. Throw in the fact, throw in the fact that the East has pretty has pretty much dominated the West over the last two to three years. I've got to three years. No, this and I know two, three, it's last three years. They've dominated. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to flow with the East on this particular matchup, despite the fact that it that it's on the road, and you know we're gonna, we're gonna have some swacky stuff go on this weekend. And I know we haven't gotten into the next matchup, but I'll go ahead and put it out there. We gonna have to wait next week to see who fam you plays. Good stuff, good stuff. With that being said, with that matchup, um, Alabama State. Um, in terms of scoring offense, they struggle there. They had 19.1. That's all 10, all nine games, I should say. Prairie View is scoring just above that at 19.9 in terms of when you look at all of the games. Defensive-wise, Alabama State sitting at two, even with FAMU with just allowing 15 points a game. Prairie View is allowing 32.5 when you look at all 10 of the games. It's a little different when you get into the conference. And, uh, in terms of what those stats look like uh, when you're talking about scoring uh, defense from that perspective. I'm always fascinated when we say this. When you get into that, Charles, um, it changes up a little bit. Prairie View scoring uh, goes up to 26.1 when you look at their last seven games. Uh, but Alabama State is right about where they were in terms of knowing 20.1 a game. When you look at defense, uh, you have Alabama State just giving up 14.9. Yeah. And Prairie View giving up 25.9. Charles, with all that said, all that data analytics, where are you going with this matchup? Uh, very much just like I said with the MIAC, with regards to Quinn Williams having to play the game of his life. The same thing holds true for Trazon Conley in this game. I think it's going to be too difficult to run on this front seven of Alabama State. Ed Robson Jr. talked about that in the Swag Media. Uh, uh, presser this past Monday that he believes that, you know, his front seven is, a, is amongst the best uh, in the FCS football. Uh, and with a guy like Colton Bubba Adams running around all over the place, it's, it's just going to be hard to get that, that running game up and going. But I take solace in the fact, if you're a Purdy fan, that they've been able to hit on, on some deep balls over the past couple of weeks, going back uh, to uh, – uh, uh, Shamar Savage having a big game against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Chris Heron having a, a big game. And then same thing happened against Southern. You had Shamar Savage uh, make a, a, a heck of a play downfield. So they're going to have to hit some hit some things downfield uh, to kind of loosen up this Alabama State defense. But to your point, you know, AD, I don't think there's been a hotter team uh, playing football than Alabama State, not named, you know, FAMU. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be a tough Tough game for Prairie View, but I think they get it done late, and I'm expecting a, a, a late game field goal somewhere here. Good stuff. Interesting with that matchup. Edwin D. Moore says PV and Bama State both have solid D. Some pads will be smacking in that game and the Alcorn versus JSU game. We talked about that on Tuesday. Drew kind of snuck out of here, and he at least gave us his overall thought that he thinks Jackson State's going to get it done because he said – the West will not be decided until next week, which means he's talking about the Bayou Classic, the winner of that deciding whether Gramlin uh, will go, meaning if they win that game, if they lose, then Prairie View goes based on how AD sees both Alcorn and Prairie View losing. Interesting. Again, give everybody the scenarios before we go to a close. Shout out to Silas Edward Moore. says data points don't matter when the game time uh, it's game time, Drew. So he's saying a little bit about that uh, idea, what that looks like. Scenario as we close up for the week. Prairie View, they win. They're in. They go to Tallahassee, and they will fight uh, 
and face FAMU for the second time this year in terms of that matchup as Drew will be keeping up the stats and we'll see him down there in terms of that matchup. If the Panthers lose, then it shifts over to see what happens between the Soul Bowl, between Jackson State and Alcorn State. Alcorn State wins, they're in. They lose, then as Drew alluded to, we have to wait another week and we go to the Bayou Classic. Grambling wins, then they're in with both Prairie View and Alcorn losing. If Southern wins that game, that means you have a three-way tie between Southern, Alcorn, and Grambling, just like the other way you had a three-way tie uh, with Grambling being able to win that because uh, they have the head-to-head tiebreaker over Prairie View after those two shift out as Alcorn is the first one out. It goes back to two-team elimination. It's between Grambling and Prairie View. Prairie View lost to Grambling in the State Fair Classic. If Southern wins, as I was saying, three-way tie between Southern, Alcorn, and Prairie View. Southern is out because they lost to both Prairie View and Alcorn, which means the head-to-head matchup comes back and it's Prairie View, Alcorn, Prairie View goes. So it'll be fascinating. A lot on the line between the MEAC and SWAC. MEAC is similar. There's no co-champions in the MEAC. So it's simple there in regards to the bid to the Celebration Bowl. Howard wins over Morgan State. They have the head-to-head tiebreaker over North Carolina Central. They head down to Atlanta. If they lose that game, then it shifts over to see what happens between North Carolina Central and Delaware State. Central wins. It is a three-way same record between those teams, between Morgan State, Howard, and Central, but they eradicated that rule this past Thank summer. God. And it's just head-to-head matchup. And in that case, uh, I would have two losses and you just have the head-to-head between Morgan State and North Carolina Central. Central beat Morgan State in a really close defensive matchup that opened up <laughs> MEAC play. So Central would find its way to Atlanta. So it'll be fascinating. Big time way to close out the season between these two conferences, playoffs in the mix. It'd be good stuff. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share your podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. King out of the the dean of HBCU Sports, coming from inside the lab, College of HBCU Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. If you didn't see the ONG Strike Zone, make sure you go check it out. They have some great interviews, great talk about uh, how FAMU is sitting and waiting to see. And obviously, they had the matchup when they talked about the Florida Classic. This Saturday, you have Carlos Brown. You know he's going to give you some updates on what's taking place in Southern, including Dooley. And while we talked about them taking it on the chin in Southern, we got to shout out the men's basketball program. They get the win against UNLV. As much as we give shout out for A&T, they got the win against on the women's side against Wake Forest. Yeah. Some good basketball being played out there. Prairie View, men, victory on Abilene Christian. So the women are doing some good work as well as they get it done. Shout out to them. Again, check out uh, X's and O's crew, BJ Jones, curator, HBC Weekly, Joshua Sim, senior curator, HBC Nightly. Go back and check that out. You can see the visual on YouTube, or you can go to Twitter and listen to that great discussion that took place there. Uh, with that being said, make sure you check out AD Drew and Brian on Sundays. They're going to give you the wrap out and tell you why, what happened on Saturday as you're either celebrating or scratching your head. They'll give you insight in terms of what happened. They'll give you some things to talk about the rest of the week of where things are going. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bills Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you, A.D. Drew, for joining us today. We look forward uh, to Sunday as we give you updates on what took place on Saturday. Follow me, Dr. Nyata Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's D-R-K-N-Y-A-T-Z-A. C-A-V-I-L, that's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1 on Twitter. Facebook and YouTube is Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1. Uh, with that being said, let me see if I can give you any update in terms of Mississippi Valley State and Alabama A&M. Alabama A&M is up 21-7, 251 left in the second quarter. 
Valley does have the ball on their own one. With that being said, Dream Big, continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. A.D. Drew? Get your popcorn ready. Lecture. <laughs> Dismiss.